Now, anyone who knows me will tell you that I've always had a soft spot for big bombastic 1980s action flicks. When I was a kid larger than life stars, like Stallone Schwarzenegger Willis and to a lesser extent Van Damme were the personification of everything that was is or ever could be awesome. And so the Expendables franchise was really a no-brainer for a guy like me. Take a bunch of aging action stars from a bygone era, give them enough guns and ammo to invade a small African country and turn them loose in a series of improbable adventures against an array of terrorists, corrupt government officials, and evil mercenaries all determined to bring about global destruction for a variety of poorly explained reasons, the series was intended as a glorious throwback to the old school. Action flicks that guys like me grew up with. And there was real enjoyment to be found in seeing these titans of the movie industry joining forces at last trading quips and kicking ass together. Yeah, it was dumb and completely implausible, but who cares? That was part of the fun the series kind of burned out with The Expendables 3, which felt rushed and sloppy despite his star-studied cast. And when Stallone bailed out of the sequel due to creative differences, it seemed like the end of the road for The Expendables. And two, be honest with you, I was fine with that after three movies they'd done everything they could do with the concept and basically run out of old action stars to resurrect. But hey, never let an idea go to waste when there's a few more dollars that can be squeezed out of it. So here we are, almost 10 years later, reuniting what's left of the gang with Expendables 4 or Expend 4 balls seriously off with these stupid gimmicky names fat for stick anyone know whatever in the same way that you feel oddly compelled to look at a road traffic accident as you drive past knowing the police will never be able to pin it on you as long as you can get your car to a body shop that takes cash and doesn't ask too many questions. I felt like I owed it to childhood drinker to go and see this movie foreign. But good lord, I truly wish I had an Expendables 4 feels like the crusty remnants of some old rock band making an ill-advised comeback for one last tour that nobody asked. For with half of the original lineup missing and a bunch of talentless newbies filling in for them, everything about this movie just feels off like if this had been made in the 1990s, it would have been some low-budget direct video sequel to a much bigger theatrical release that didn't do quite as well as the studio had hoped nobody's heart really seems to be in this one. It looks cheap as the dialogue has no energy or excitement to it, the action scenes somehow manage to be ludicrous and boring at the same time and everyone involved gives off this weirdly tired, disinterested vibe like they already knew the kind of they were making and just wanted to get it over with so they could collect their paychecks and go home if this is meant to be the final movie in the franchise, which it almost certainly will be considered as disastrous box office run. Then it's a real wet fart of a climax that even Tatiana would be embarrassed by, and believe me, she's experienced many wet. Fart climaxes the movie once again picks up with Barney Ross and Lee Christmas played by a Stallone and Statham, who look like they desperately want to be somewhere else. The boys get recruited by Shady C.I. a man marsh for a mission. In Libya, their objective is to stop evil mercenary guy from stealing a bunch of nuclear warheads from an old weapons plan while he's in the process of stealing them. I kid you not, in the time it takes statements to learn to gather their team, brief them on the plan, fly from America to North Africa, and get out to the weapons plan, the assault to capture the place is still underway? Oh my goodness, you totally can't tell that this whole section was written later and awkwardly shoved into the existing scripts. Those Hollywood screenwriters really are worth every penny anyway. The mission goes tits up faster than a Krakoti girl after two cans of white lightning and Barney ends up getting killed when his plane crashes. Oh no, can you believe that he's dead and gone forever and totally won't make a miraculous appearance at the climax of the movie? What a crushing blow. Anyway, a new team is quickly assembled to go. After the mercenaries led by a very plastic-looking Megan Fox, who for some reason thinks she can do action movies unaccompanied by Marsh, 
who's there to make sure that they don't fail at. Second time. So like, is it Mars that's calling the shots here? Or Plastic Fox? Nah, who even cares? So the gang will head out to a cargo ship, which the Mercs are planning to self-destruct near the Russian coastline, and trigger World War, aye aye. But oh no, they all get captured without a shot getting fired. Because that's totally how the Expendables roll now and it's left up to Statham to make his way on board, rescue the gang, take down the villains, and stop the nuke from going off cue. About 30 minutes of uninspired action sequences, not so shocking betrayals that anyone with more brain cells than your average YouTube reaction channel would have seen coming from 10 miles away frequent jump cuts to hide the use of stuntmen. Dialogue so cliched and wooden that it makes the room look like pulp fiction, and last minute rescues that surprise absolutely no one because we all knew they wouldn't have the balls to kill off any. Major characters, like I said earlier, there's something decidedly off-kilter about Expendables 4, from the cheap and sloppy production, designed to the lackluster performances, to the truncated cast Arnold Terry Crews, and Jet Li are all gone now, when while some of them only had limited roles before. Their complete absence here leaves a gape and hold at the rest of the cast struggle to fill. I mean, let's be honest here, I don't think many people are gonna rush out to see Randy Kocher or Dolph Lundgren these days and the new replacements are even worse. 50 Cent sleepwalks his way through the movie looking like he's got no clue what he's supposed to be doing or why he's got absolutely no chemistry with the rest of the cast the script gives him nothing meaningful to do and most of. The time he feels like a complete fifth wheel Megan Falk is also here as the world's least convincing special forces operative. She can't fight or move to any real degree. She's got no gravitas or authority when she's supposed to be leading the team. And most of the time, she just looks bored and completely spaced out. I mean, Ronda Rousey wasn't exactly winning any Oscars in the previous movie either. But at least she actually knew how to fight, so you could buy into her action sequences. Really. I can only think of two reasons why Megan was cast in this film, and to be fair, the director makes good use of them. At least the only guy who actually seems to be enjoying himself is Jacob Scipio as the son of Antonio Banderas' character from the previous film. He's a dead ringer for the guy, and even has his voice and mannerisms down to a T. His scenes are probably the only time in the film when I was actually enjoying myself because he clearly was too stolen originally, wasn't even supposed to be in this movie, so the script had to be reworked on the fly to include him and Holy. You can really tell how awkwardly his scenes were cut. It's like the writers had to come up with a solution in the space of a single afternoon, and the best they could do was off. Let's say he disappears in the first act, but then he comes back at the end because he faked his own death. Oh yeah. I think I can smell shite, yes sure, okay genius stuff right there with Stallone am I? Ugh, the bulk of the work has to fall on Jason Statham, who's normally pretty reliable as a Legion man, but just like everyone else he comes across as bored and checked out for most of the film, he can still hold his own in the fight scenes, but even he struggles to make anything out of the absolutely atrocious dialogue he has to work. With all of these various problems add up to a movie that's completely outlived its own premise, most of the big stars that form the backbone of the series have drifted away now, and the ones that did bother to show up are really just phoning it in for an easy payday, the action sequences that used. To be a giant middle finger to the soulless CGI excesses of modern films have devolved into the very thing they swore to destroy lifeless and flaccid and completely uninvolving and the amateur hour script fails to provide the glorious send-off or even the definitive conclusion that the series deserves. It's nothing but an embarrassing wet fart of a movie that everyone involved with probably wants to forget as soon as possible, including me and as it happens. I know just the them.